Oh my god, hey. <laughs> Hi guys. Um I put my <laughs> put my uh Ooh, my cooling mask on a little bit too too fast and it's giving me it's giving me brain freeze but you know what it'll subside it'll pass but good morning welcome into another one we're here again to talk deep guys today's episode it is probably going to be a pretty deep one just because um i mean don't get me wrong not all these are going to be deep right i've just got a few things to talk about and it's not it's not going to be deep in the way of like it's going to be sad because it's all good things, but I just don't want it to come across as like me preaching to you guys because this is not what I want this to turn into by any means. But the day that I'm recording this now, I don't know when you're going to be seeing this because I've pre-filmed a few episodes, so I don't know what kind of order I'm going to be putting them out in. But the day that I'm recording this, Casey Musgraves has come back with a new song. The day, well, yesterday. Um, and last night not to talk about it again i was at the gym but i was at the gym listening to this new casey musgrave song um just because she just released the video so i watched the video like as i was like wrapping up at the gym not not the optimal environment to be listening to casey musgraves by any means but i was so um i was there yesterday and then the song so i'd i'd been having a lot of like feelings or topics come up just like in my life that I'd been like collecting almost like I'd been noting them all down in my notes but then obviously I needed enough to flush out a full episode right so this this song came out yesterday and this video came out yesterday the video is not really that important like it's just a really cute video I really like it but the song specifically in the lyrics because if you don't know I'm a major lyric fan like lyrics deep lyrics beautiful lyrics they will get to me okay so that's exactly what this was Miss Casey did come back with some incredible lyrics and it kind of just like it spoke to me in a way that like a few songs have been at the minute. And obviously if you've, if you've watched the first episode of this podcast when I came back, it's titled I'm Lonely. If you haven't, it's on the channel or it's on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. If you haven't watched that, maybe go check it out, but maybe not because I'll probably hit on it here. But obviously in that episode, I was kind of talking about how I'm trying to feel much more positive and I'm trying to like let go of things that aren't necessarily serving me well or change habits and all this kind of thing, right? So the song that she released is titled Deeper Well, and I've almost created like a essay, well, like video essay bullet point scenario in my notes, but it's not like a video, a video essay about the song necessarily. It's just like kind of what the lyrics made me feel and kind of how I'm relating them to my life. Um, because in all honesty, guys, I didn't expect the song to impact me in the way that it did. But um, I won't lie, I was sat in the gym almost crying from, like, some of these lyrics. Now, don't get me wrong, some of the lyrics I'm pretty sure are meant to be, like, satire. Like, essentially, the themes in the song are a lot to do with, like, releasing negative energy, let, letting go of things that aren't serving you correct, um, doing what's best for you changing, evolving, all these kind of things, right? Now, I I don't personally like to get into the whole, like, energies and, like, all that kind of thing, because I think sometimes it can get a bit too ooky spooky for me. Um, like, I appreciate it, and I think as a metaphorical thing, I think for me it's quite useful just, just to, like, just to think, no, like, I do need to protect my energy, but I do think sometimes, like, even people in my life can take it a bit far um, and like they put a lot of weight into energies and like reading each other's energies and all this stuff. And I, I do sometimes think like, yes, we as humans, we're quite complex, but also let's just relax for a sec. Like it, not everything has to be analysed to the 10th degree, you know? So I try not to analyse things that deep, but I do think to myself every so often, how can we boost ourselves, right? Like in, in uni, I had a few friends and we and, and we all used to kind of say like, you want to keep your vessel full. Like imagine your body's a vessel, right? Now this is this is sounding ooky spooky and I'm sorry and I'm sorry if it's not, not your tea, but I promise 
it's not going to take too long to get through. But imagine, obviously, your body is a vessel, right? And you want to keep the vessel full, right? You're not going to want to allow things in your life or friendship groups or habits or vices or any of these things. It's it's not going to be a positive thing for these things to start taking a negative effect on the vessel, right? So the vessel is empty. And often as humans, maybe in, maybe some of you have felt it. I know how I felt it. Obviously, we get burnout, right? Some of us get just sad, emotional. Like Generally, as humans, we do get to a point where we need a break, right? And I know I've hit on that quite a bit in previous episodes. So that's not new for me for me to say, I guess. So yeah, the whole idea for the song, as I said, it's titled Deeper Well. Now, I, if we're trying to dig deep into what I think this whole deeper well thing is kind of saying, because in the song, she, she, like in the verses, she kind of like tells us like about things that she's changed or things that she's realized, right? And then at the height of the chorus, she's like, but all this has happened essentially, but I've now found a deeper well. Like, and in my brain, obviously the, the easy solution or the easy connection to make would be, oh, she just found like a deeper meaning almost, right? But then I was like, right, let me think about this here. Let me just get my analytic brain on for a second because I do love doing this with lyrics. Um, Because I do think like, even though the singer maybe meant, meant them a certain way, I do think it's quite fun for an audience member or a listener just to like, kind of let it take on take on a meaning that they need, you know? So although this might not be what Casey meant, I think it is valid enough that I'm deciding to take that away from it, you know? So in my brain, I was like, right, right well, what does a well provide, okay? And in my mind, it was, realistically, we, we've seen it in either older times or lesser developed countries or whatever, like wells provide water, nourishment. They, 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 they're, they're providing us with something, right? Okay, so is this like, she's she's found something that's going to provide her with even more nourishment or it's going to feed her soul or fill her vessel, as it were, right? She's found a deeper meaning and something that's going to nourish her more than the things that she was relying on previously, right? Even if it's, like, not far from... Because realistically, she could just say, like, oh, yeah, I found a well. But obviously, it found a deeper well, obviously meaning that she had a well before, but she's found something deeper. Because then, guys, I'm not going to lie, this is getting really ooky spooky now. But I also had another thought, like, okay, so wells go down into the earth, right? A deeper well gets closer to the core of the earth. I was like, is she trying to say, like, maybe she found something or she discovered something that helps feed feed her core? (laughs) I'm sounding so ridiculous, but I promise it's not going to last, right? I've just got thoughts, okay? And if you've not listened to the song, I'm sorry. Maybe go listen to it. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you kind of what it's about. So, yeah. So, yeah, in my brain, I was just like, okay, so imagine the core of the earth is her, us, right? We found a deeper well, something that connects to us on a deeper level. That's, that's, that's the, the, the very furthest, the very farthest, furthest, I'm not sure the word, the very farthest I could take it that was where I landed, okay? So that's kind of like my analysis on maybe what the title represents or what I'm taking away from it, right? In a a very metaphorical sense. As we obviously go through the song, she then starts speaking about like vices or habits or things that she's discovered that aren't serving her necessarily as well as they once did or as, as well as she once thought that they did, right? Whether that's friends, people, whatever. So I'm pretty sure at the beginning of the song, she she speaks a lot about discovering or realizing as people obviously we all serve a different purpose in each other's lives i do believe that like i don't believe just because one person necessarily treats me away they're not going to treat someone else in in their life the same way right but she's obviously speaking about how as humans there's like kind of two two categories if we're going to generalize right there's there's a category of people that are givers there's also a group of people that are takers right so 
she's she's speaking about how obviously she's encountered some takers and she's done. She's done. She's done allowing people to take take her energy, right? Take from her fucking well. Okay, if we're gonna talk about it like that, right? Now in my brain, I've not necessarily encountered many people that are trying to take my energy just because i'm i'm someone who likes to keep my friendship group very close not very big i'm i'm pretty good at sussing out energies and people's intentions so if i don't feel like it's necessarily going to serve me i'm pretty good at cutting people off or just like phasing it out before we can really get into the depths of the shit you know so i find myself not really um, experiencing that so much. But she obviously then goes on to talk about habits. Like for her, I'm pretty sure she's talking about waking and baking. Now, I'm not into all that myself. No judgment, but I'm not. So she's just kind of discovering that that's obviously a huge habit that she had. Um, that she thought for the longest time was obviously serving her well. And then it kind of made me think like internally, like what, what are things that I have... Um, like clung on to or I've needed in the past to help me grow, be better, just cope with life, right? Now, mine aren't necessarily something that's tangible, but for me, a lot of the time and realizations that I'm coming to is that I, for the longest time growing up, and I, and I have thoughts as to why this is, and we'll go into that. But for me, a lot of it comes down to either validation or specifically reassurance, because I think a lot of times validation can be made out to be quite a negative thing. Obviously, with social media these days, it's very easy for us all to crave validation on some level. And I think we do, right? As much as you can sit on the other side of this screen or the other side of whatever you're listening to this on and say, no, I don't look for validation. And and realistically, I've done the same thing for myself. Like I've said like, no, I don't need validation, which ultimately is true. I don't need it. Is it nice? Yes. But it's also not validation in the way of like, tell me I'm pretty, you know? So like, I think when, whenever people speak about needing validation, it often goes to that, right? Whereas I'm meaning validation and reassurance in the way of like decision-making or me doing anything in my life and needing reassurance from outside perspectives to tell me that, that I'm doing a good enough job and I'm, I'm creating something that's of of purpose like for me for me to feel valid in whatever i'm doing whether that's like decisions that i'm making or if it's literally tangible things like obviously i've i've spoken quite a bit i'm i'm a creative person so growing up i danced which is a huge thing and we'll go into that in a minute but i danced i did a lot of art right but obviously i enjoyed what i was making and i obviously thought to continue it and to finish something, I obviously must have thought that it was good enough to finish, right? But for me to really feel good about something to the point of, like, contention, like, I feel content with something. I don't think I've just used... I don't think I've used that word in the right way. Contention. I think that means something different. But anyway, for me to feel content with something being finished and being good enough, I've always found myself needing to ask people in my life whether they think it's good, which I don't necessarily think is a negative because I do think it's good to be in tune with what others think about you because at the end of the day, you don't want to become delusional, right? And that's one thing I'm definitely not. I'm not a fucking delusionist. Is that the right word? God, I'm throwing all these words out here and none of them, none of them may be correct, but you'll listen anyway, <laughs> okay? So yeah, so if there's one thing that I'm not, and I know I'm not, that is delusional right? I'm a, I'm a major realist, sometimes to my detriment, to be honest, as I've spoken about on the podcast, I can be quite hard on myself. But I do think a lot of this reassurance, validation, perfectionism, because funnily enough, guys, I did my, at uni, I did my dissertation on perfectionism. And it was the first time, now I've never really gelled with essays and long writing and all that bollocks. I've just never been able to do it. Like, I, I've been told quite often that the way I write is the same way that I speak. And I mean, as you guys, I'm sure have heard, I'm not always the most eloquent. Okay, so 
I never really gelled with essays, but my dissertation, because obviously it was something I was able to choose. I was able to choose what I wanted to do it on and it was something that I was passionate about and it was something that I know I had been a sucker for having. You know, like I, I, I'm a major perfectionist and often to my detriment, right? Um, it was something that I found myself really interested in figuring out more. So that was the first time I did really, really well on an essay. And obviously, what a great time to that for that to happen, because obviously your dissertation is something that matters a lot in your overall grade for uni. Um, so luckily, to my benefit, I did really well on my dissertation. But it's because I because obviously I was trying to dissect something that I innately felt a lot, right? Now, obviously, growing up as a dancer, now, if you've danced, you've been around dancers, then maybe you'll know. Often, as dancers, in any sort of environment, whether that's professional, vocational, or just as a hobby, a lot, a lot that goes into dancing is analysing the outside perspective of what you look like. Obviously, we all dance in front of fucking mirrors, right? And especially since I did it at a vocational level at uni, because I went to uni for contemporary and ballet, um, obviously, since doing it at that level, the analysis of what you look like is huge, right? Every day from like half past eight till half past six at night, for the most part, you're thinking, what do I look like? What do other people think of this? What do the teachers think? Am I doing a good job? All these kind of things, right? So it's not surprising for me now to be realizing that I do have an issue or did have, because I'm definitely on the other side of it and I'm trying to let, let go of that, right? But I definitely did have a crippling issue with validation and reassurance specifically. But anyway, so that's that's kind of what that line in the song made me think of because it was just, it's just like yes, she's obviously got habits. I don't think I've necessarily got habits that I cling on to to get me through, but I know for a fact for a while in my life I was clinging on to getting validation in any sense of the word specifically artistically and creatively like through dance unless someone told me that they thought i did a good job i would think i did the worst it was really it was really rough but i'm sure i could speak to many people that were part of like my uni experience and they'd think the exact same because i think it is it is somewhat of a breeding ground for unhealthy mindsets now if you want me to go into more depth in terms of uni and maybe like things that went down and certain things like that, like anecdotes from my experience at uni, if any of you would find that interesting at all. I'm sure you can all imagine a ballet school specifically is some of the hardest mentally um, for a person to go through. So if, if that was interesting, if that does interest any of you, then obviously let me know and I can do an episode on that. But yeah, so that was obviously one thing that I'd kind of taken away from this song and it kind of made me, made me think about. And then on a whole other level, guys. Now, this is one of those things that I had been thinking about a lot. And this kind of feeds into every aspect of my life and who I am as a person. But this song really helped me flush it out as an idea. So there's a part of a, the song, I think it's towards the end, where she's kind of talking about how when she was a child, I'm pretty sure like she was really happy she had a great childhood, but at the same time, everyone believes that the earth was flat. Like It was a very simple life where everyone believed the earth was flat. And I kind of took that as meaning like, people didn't have the the perception on the earth and life and other people as much as we do today. Because I think obviously given social media and the news and we're, we're not short of information, right? I think it's very easy for us to almost be too in tune with what's going on elsewhere, okay? So obviously she's, she hits on that very base level, it is what it is. This then, guys, this part impacted me because I, for a while, I've been like kind of thinking about how I grew up because if you didn't know, which I don't think I've ever really spoken about it, but if you didn't know, I grew up in basically the bumfuck nowhere of Yorkshire, right? It's one of those places where people don't leave. If you're born there, you end up kind of just living there most of your life. You might go away for uni, you might come back, those kind of things. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't live too far away from there now, but 
still, I'm in a city, I'm living my best life, I'm living alone. Like, it's nowhere near the same environment, trust and belief, okay? So that's where I grew up. And obviously growing up in one of these like small towns, you can imagine the shit that goes down. It's one of those places where everyone knows each other. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of like, it's, it feels a bit like an incubator. Like you feel like you're kind of like in this place and nothing else exists outside of it. Because like I said, everyone knows each other. Everyone's familiar with what's going on in each other's lives. The language that's used is so inappropriate and obviously I grew up around it and obviously I didn't have any choice in that matter so I growing up didn't necessarily know any better so a lot of the language that was surrounding me at the time like I've spoken about it before like me growing up even part of like my family like my family members more distant family members but a lot of times like growing up as a queer person specifically and like being flamboyant as a child I definitely experienced my fair share of name calling not even just at school and stuff like that in my family like I got called fairy I had a name that my close family used to call me which was Brenda um which was kind of like my name for when I was being more flamboyant or I was acting out in more of a feminine way whatever that is yeah so trust me I've been I've <laughs> I've I've had my fair share of my fair share of bullshit. All this to say, in these kind of little towns, the language that is used to describe people and like there's not a lot of respect for minorities, which I think is a nice way of putting it, right? I'm, and I'm sure you all know what I mean. Like racism boots. Racism boots, homophobia, queerphobia, just LGBTQIA plus phobia, all the things women aren't respected enough, all these kind of things. It's all prevalent in this small little town. And obviously, I grew up there. I didn't go to uni until I was 18. So 18 years of my life, I was surrounded by this whole narrative. And obviously, I didn't know any better, right? Don't get me wrong. I wasn't being racist. I knew better than better than that. But at the same time, like I also wasn't speaking up or I wasn't vocal the same way that I am now, right? So obviously, when I moved to uni, you're around loads of different people from all over the fucking country and some people from other countries. Like, those people in my year from fucking China, Japan, Australia. Like, guys, craziness. There was loads of people in my year that was from all over the place, right? So, obviously, being thrust into that environment as someone who's been an only male child in a family, growing up dancing around just girls, not being around many other boys figuring out my sexuality just before going to uni. You can imagine I did I did grow a lot. I did realize a lot of things. And obviously like it it just made it made me act differently. It made me realize what I'll stand for and what I won't. And this kind of ties back to the whole like protecting your energy. And even if like you're surrounded by people like coming back from uni to my hometown, then being surrounded by people that haven't grown ha- like still speak the same way that they used to speak fucking years ago, right? And this is both family members and not, and distant family and not. I specifically just realised I will not put up with some of this bullshit that I'm hearing that used to fly because I didn't know any better. And I didn't know to speak up and stand up for what I believe in, right? So this has all happened very recently, I'd say over the last couple of years, obviously since since leaving uni, because a lot of time when I'd come home from uni, I used to kind of think, oh, I go back to uni soon. Is there really a need for rocking the boat, right? And I'm sure a lot of people have thought that same way, okay? But then I've, I've kind of discovered, like, specifically more recently, that I'm talking recent as this past Christmas, right? Things happening at Christmas and a, and a, and like surrounding my family that's things that I will not tolerate being around like there were several times around the Christmas period that I was like you know what I'm just going to go home back to my own flat because I don't want to be around this like and I understand like from these people's point, point of view right so I'm not going to name any names but obviously part of my family from their point of view it, it's it's like I'm now a different person. I've been branded as someone who's very overly opinionated. This is just kind of what I have to deal with in my life. 
right? And I don't feel bad saying any of this because realistically my family know, knows that I'm not happy with certain stuff and I don't think they really listen to this. So it is what it is. I've been kind of branded as the sibling that's now very opinionated, overly opinionated, has changed, um, likes to rock the boat, all these kind of derogatory things, right? And all this kind of stems from me knowing now what I will tolerate and what I won't. And I think, and I think I've spoken about this before in a previous episode, but it's very important, even if they are family, because I feel like we're nurtured to think that you've always got to have respect for your family. You've kind of just got to let things slide when it comes to your family members because they are your family members. And I actually think there's something to be said about not putting up with shit that you won't allow anybody else to put up, like, to do with your family members. Like, th there shouldn't be a disconnect there. Like, I think we should be able to say to your family members, look, I'm not comfortable with what you're saying. I'm not comfortable with the, the language that you're using. Please change it. If you're not willing to change it, I'm not going to be here. Right? And I had a few conversations like that at Christmas. And I'm not even going to go into detail because I just don't think it's going to be beneficial in any way. But just know it kind of got to a boiling point where I was just like, you know what? If this is how you guys are going to want to act, I can't I can't deal with it. And I'm unsure still whether me speaking up is really getting through to them or whether they still see it as me just trying to rock the boat and whatnot. But I think so often, and I'm not sure if many people can relate to this, I don't know. I know me and my best friend have had quite a few conversations about it. With unlearning things from when you were a child or the way you've been brought up, with unlearning things from that time comes a judgmental tone of like, I'm being made to feel awkward and I'm being made to feel like the outsider in this family now because I've learned things are wrong, right? We're not about to use racist or derogatory language just because your child receives a doll that is a, per that is a doll of colour right? We're not, we're like, we're not going to do that. And I'm not going to allow that. And I, and yeah, like I'm, I'm sometimes and have been in the past been made to feel like I'm wrong in this situation because I've now decided that that's not language that I want to be around. It's very weird. And, it, and it's an internal battle that I found myself having to be like, no, I know that this is right. And I know that this is something that I feel passionate enough to stand behind. I'm not going to allow you to make me feel like an outsider just because I don't think the same way as you people anymore. And yes, you're my family and I still love you, but at the at the same time, I don't agree with it. So, I, so I'm not going to put up with it. And if that means uh, th things like f family functions and fucking Christmas and whatever else and like New Year's, like if that means that I'm going to have to speak up and rock the boat in that way, then I fucking will because I'm not going to allow it. The main thing for me was like, Going to uni, really coming into my sexuality, I'm very used to hearing, seeing the way people act towards minorities because I'm part of one myself. So I think it's only natural for me to have sympathy for other minorities and see when something is wrong because, and I've said this before to my family, like, if you were a person of colour, would you like to hear what you're saying? Would you like to be around the language that's being used. And, and and I've said to them, I understand I'm not a person of colour, right? But I and I've said this about like trans things and stuff before. Like, I don't have to be a person of colour to sympathize and see when something's wrong. And I don't have to be trans to understand that certain language is wrong. You know? Like like I I, I had at one point like I think I put on my story on my Instagram story something to do with probably like politics and the way this country specifically has a major issue when it comes to brazen derogatory language towards trans people. Like recently, we like not to speak about politics because I don't like to online. I don't think it's good. Um, and I don't think it brings out the best in anybody. But I will hit on it because it pissed me off. Obviously, the other day I saw the Rishi, Rishi, Rishi Sunak, the fucking buffoon that he is, decided to make inappropriate jokes about, once again, trans people, because, you know, trans people are the problem and gay people are the problem and the LGBTQIA plus people are the problem. Fucking ridiculous, might I add. But anyway, we're not going to get onto that. 
he he decided to take it on himself to make jokes about trans pe- trans people specifically when Brianna, the 16-year-old girl that got murdered recently or last year, right? Her mum was in this same conference or whatever the fuck it was, right? Her mum was in there and he's making these comments and how disrespectful you have to be to do something like that and what's what's even more concerning to me is not the fact that he said it because realis- realistically Rishi Sh- Rishi can't fucking say his name don't deserve it Rishi Sunak is a fucking wanker right that's the truth but what's even more concerning is the amount of people in that room that were laughing at these jokes, that were participating in these jokes. It's not funny, right? Gay people, transgender people, black people, they're not, when we're not, obviously I can only speak for like gays here, but I'm sure people will feel the same. We're not the butt of people's jokes. This is our lives. It's not funny to degrade us and it's not funny to be disgusting towards us and take away our rights. This is not funny. This is not fun for us. Right? Sorry not to get deep, but that really pissed me off. But anyway, all these things kind of kind of like came to the forefront of my brain when listening to this song. Crazy, I know, but it did. So in back to the song, right? Let's dial it back a sec because I'm sorry that I got a bit passionate there, but I'm sure you could understand why, right? As part of the song, she's speaking about unlearning things from her childhood. And I and I feel like I've had to do that a lot, right? And you figure the rest out as you go. And I think I'm still figuring out who I want to be, what I want to say, how I wanna how I wanna fucking portray myself. Because this was this is like another thing. And this definitely started from uni. And you know what? I'll go into it, right? Obviously, at uni, just before I went to uni, so New Year's of 2016 was when I first came out. I went to uni September of 2016. So I'm I'm sure you can imagine me going to uni fresh off, like, really admitting to myself who I was. There was a lot of growth to be had. And obviously I was around a lot of people that were comfortable in their sexuality, right? Because there were people of all ages there, people of all sexualities. So I, I didn't necessarily find it hard to come to terms with who I was and really come into my own. But at the same time, there was there was, there was obviously a lot of outside influence, right? And I think it's ne- not necessarily a negative thing, but it's there's something to be said about the people that you are you're around definitely influencing you as a person and how you put yourself out there, right? And I definitely will say not that there's anything wrong with it. Um in uni, I definitely would portray myself in much more of a flamboyant way and a much more like, I don't know, just a bit more of a fruity way than I do these days, right? And obviously I was younger. This was years ago now. But also I was a, I was around the kind of people that would kind of like this. So not that I was like copying these people because I wouldn't say that. But I think it's very easy for us as humans to kind of like match the energy as it were, right, of your, like, friendship group or how certain people act, right? So I definitely think I did that in uni. There was a whole time where I had a bit of a shaky, shaky experience with my mum specifically, and I hope she doesn't mind me talking about this, but this is my experience, and it's, it's definitely changed the way I look at things. When I first went home the first half term after starting uni, Obviously, I imagine I appeared quite differently to my family and like I was acting slightly differently, whatever. Me and my mum had this very uncomfortable conversation where she was essentially seeing how I changed. And obviously for her, it's quite a drastic thing. And this is no way a negative thing to my mum, because don't get me wrong. My parents in general are extremely supportive parents. I've never felt and I've never made me feel like I can't be gay. I can't do any of that thing. They've never made me feel like that at all, right? But we did have this very awkward conversation, me and my mum, where I came back and obviously she'd seen how I'd changed quite a lot over a short period of time. And I do imagine for her that was quite a shocking thing to witness because obviously you've, you've brought up this child for 18 years of their life and you're now seeing how they're changing a lot. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure it's very easy for her to see that in a negative way, right? So we had this kind of conversation where she 
spoke to me about it not making her feel uncomfortable, but she was unsure whether the way I was acting was true to me or whether I was kind of being influenced a lot by the people that I was around, right? And how she was kind of just saying like, I don't know if she was necessarily saying that she didn't like who I was becoming, but it was more just from a motherly perspective of like wanting to make sure that I'm still me and I'm not being influenced by anybody and I'm only doing what I want to do, right? Does that make sense? Now, I'm not sure if she like articulated that in that exact way. And I know that it definitely made me feel quite insecure about myself because to me, with a bit more of an immature mindset, it kind of felt like she was saying to me like, I don't like who you're becoming. I don't like how feminine or effeminate your dancing's becoming and whatnot because obviously she'd she'd seen how I'd been dancing and like being able to partner women and stuff and obviously she's now seeing a different side to me so with my very immature mindset at the time like my freshly 18 year old mindset I definitely didn't take away from that conversation what I take away now right so it was a it was a rocky experience for me at the time and I definitely went through it a little bit around that time. But now looking back, I do think, not that she was correct in kind of the way she made me feel at the time, because like I said, I'm not sure if she articulated it in the way that I've just articulated it to you people. But I think she was almost valid in her, in her wanting to make sure that I was still being true to myself. Because this is something that I've been kind of, not battling a lot with, but like, it's been a lot of um, internal conversations that I'm having to have with myself surrounding my identity within the gay community, as it were. It's a very broad thing that I'm sure I could go into much deeper. But for me, it's been quite interesting seeing how I change around certain friends, around my family... Once again, I'm not trying to paint this in a negative, and, I, and I'm and i sure there's people out there that are maybe listening to this that you might experience the same thing. And we're, we're kind of chameleons, I feel like, in a sense. And I will say, I think for sometimes gay people and queer people and whatever else, I think sometimes we know when to pull it back if we feel like we need to as like a survival instinct, you know? So, so I do see, obviously, how that can be a thing. But I've also found myself being like, I don't necessarily need to act a certain way or chameleon myself around, for example, my friendship group or my friends in general. I don't need to adapt because my friends are going to be my friends regardless, right? So I'm trying to come to terms... I'm trying to now figure out who I want to be within the gay community, essentially, because for the longest time, I definitely was presenting much more flamboyant, much more stereotypically queer and gay right and currently i don't feel that as much and i feel i do sometimes feel a bit of a disconnect with my closest friend because he's still around around that kind of vibe he lives in london he, that's just how he chooses to express and i and i and i have found it a little bit sometimes like oh like i don't relate to him as much anymore because i don't want to present in that way anymore and I don't know, it's, it, it's just been a weird one. I don't necessarily know the answers right now, but I think a lot of it does come back to sometimes this societal standard of being happy to appear straight, which is a whole other topic, right? And, and sorry to just like shove this in towards the end of this episode because it is quite a big topic that I think deserves its time. But it kind of ties into this whole thing for me where like growing up, I think as gay people, we see it as a success or a win to appear more straight, right? And I know I felt that, damn right I have, right? Especially not not always being out and not always being as comfortable in your sexuality growing up and stuff. I think there's a lot of pressure put on us sometimes to appear straight, as it were, or stereotypically what straight people are meant to act like, right? And I think all of this has kind of come full circle and I'm still figuring it out. So me bringing this up, I've not got necessarily a solid s statement to close this out on. 
by any means, but I do think it's something that's good to have a conversation with yourself about in just making sure that you're your authentic self and focusing on your own energy, not to bring it back to energy and Casey Musgraves, but I will, because this is kind of like spurred on this whole episode. But I'm kind of becoming content with the idea that like, I might not know who exactly I am or how I fit in this gay community. And I don't necessarily fit with the stereotypes of what gay people are. And maybe sometimes I do feel success or validated in appearing more straight. And I put weight into that sometimes maybe. Like I'm not a perfect human being and I'm not trying to say that I am at all. But I think that's fine to try like to actively figure out because I don't think it's necessarily a straight line thing and it's not something that you can just easily figure out. Um, but I did want to speak about it because it is something that as I'm on this journey of being happier, being content with who I am, what I want to do with my life, how I want to be, people I want to surround myself with, as I'm kind of on this journey of caring, but caring less about public perception, um, that's just something that's arose for me. And I, and I would be interested to hear if any of you guys have had these kind of thoughts, because I'm sure I'm not alone at all. Like, hello, there's many, many gay people. But it's just an interesting one. And, and I generally don't believe that it is a negative for us to change as humans. Because I feel like a lot of what I've hit on this, in this podcast has been changing, whether that's like changing your personality, like your appearance, the language you use, the, the, your, your toleration of certain things. A lot of it is is change. And I, don't, and I think sometimes there's, there's a negative thing that surrounds change. And I'm coming to terms with the fact that change is not a negative. As human beings, we evolve, right? I'm sure me in a few years listening to this podcast, I'm sure there's things that I'll be seeing in myself that I won't be seeing in myself later down the line. And I think that's a totally okay thing. We evolve, we change, and it's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful thing. And, and as I've sat here and spoke about who I was in uni and like surround those surrounding times and like me as a child and like me growing up and whatnot, it's beautiful to see how far I've come, you know? Like, like, and I, and I feel like often we feel a bit of like a, I don't even know the word. Like we feel a bit ashamed of maybe like what we were doing back then or how we were acting or the people we surrounded ourselves with when realistically, like rather than judging yourself for who you were, like how about we celebrate how far you've come and what, you, what you've changed and how beautiful it is that you've decided that there's things in your life that you're not going to allow anymore and you're putting yourself first. Like that is something to be celebrated. And that's, that's where I'm at. I think to close the, this pod out, that's where I'm at. I'm just accepting myself for who I am in the moment. And, I, and I'm kind of becoming content with the idea that I might think right now that I'm having revelations and I'm figuring a lot of things out. But realistically, give me another five years and I'll be a completely different person. And that's beautiful, right? So, yeah, this is this episode. I'm sorry if it's been all over the place. I think it might have been all over the place. Um, but hopefully anything I've said it's kind of hit home with you, please do feel free to let me know in the comments. I do love hearing from you guys. And I do think um, I am loving, I'm loving this little community that we've got for this podcast. Like it might not be huge, but I don't need it to be huge. I, I do like having these episodes to talk to you guys on a bit of a bit, of, bit more of a deeper level and talk about topics that I can't really fit in anywhere else, you know? So I love hearing your guys' stories. Even if you don't want to put it in the comments, I'd love for you to DM me anything that you feel like you relate to. And like, I'd love to hear your experiences if you feel comfortable sharing. Um, but anyway, yeah, this has been really fun and therapeutic for me. And I love these kind of conversations. And me and my friends have these a lot. So it's nice that I've got an outlet for it. Because sometimes I don't, I don't want to have to speak to my friends about it you know sometimes i just want to vent to a camera <laughs> and hope that people hear me you know but yeah with all that said this has been this episode thank you so much for listening if you've got to this point um i'll, I'll do the typical typical podcaster thing things to say please do rate me five stars if you've cared um please subscribe to the second channel if you wanted to see more podcast episodes like and comment on this video if you're watching it on youtube yeah, um, I do want to do a 
episode soon. I mean, I've pre-filmed some episodes, so I'm not sure. I'm kind of like trying to get a backlog going, but I do want to do a episode where I'm doing obviously advice and whatnot. And I have created now an email and I'm pretty sure it's hello dot morningglorypod at gmail.com. Um, so if you have any dilemmas or anything or confessions, please do feel free to email in. It's all going to be anonymous. But yeah, um, I've also got an Instagram page. Not sure if any of you want to follow it, um, but it's like Morning Glory Pod, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm going to start posting like clips from the podcasts on there. Um, and obviously, there's also the link to the email on that page. So I'd love if you could give me a follow over there. But if not, that's totally fine. And yeah, I will love you guys and leave you guys. And I will see you guys next week, same time. Bye.